eyes are on 2024 independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as speculation about who his running mate could be continues to swirl. According to people familiar with the discussions, RFK has approached NFL quarterback Aaron Rodgers and former Minnesota governor and professional wrestler Jesse Ventura about serving as his running mate on an independent ticket. And the New York Times reports that both have welcomed the ventures. Meanwhile, RFK Jr. went on Fox News for a wide-ranging interview, including POTUS' age, mental acuity, State of the Union address, and the importance of participating in public debates. Let's watch some of that. I think that it's, it's important for President Biden to do what he did the other night, which is actually come out in public, but more importantly, to have unscripted debates, uh, unscripted encounters with voters uh, to engage in the debate, which Americans expect from a presidential candidate. And, um, you know, to show this is, a, this is a job, Neil, that requires a lot of nuance, of complexity of mind, of acuity, mental acuity. And we want to we we have a right to uh, to assurances that the person who's in charge of of taking that phone call at three o'clock in the morning when all of our children's lives are at stake, that they're going to make good judgments. Here is more on the 2024 presidential race and a possible libertarian run from RFK Jr. taking these questions. There's been talk that you're you're going to become a libertarian. Uh, that they're interested in you. Any truth to that? They're, that could get you on pretty much all uh, the states. We, uh, yeah, we will be on all the state ballots, and we're, we've now launched today. Actually, we're starting launching a, a push to get us on all the ballots that are open today. At this point, within four to six weeks, and as they open, we will we, we will have four to six weeks to get on each one, and we will make those deadlines. All right. When you say you make those deadlines, then you would be more than a, a spoiler, right? If you're on all the state ballots, you have a real crack at it and, and, and more than just getting a, a spoiler role. But the, the, the traditional wisdom is you hurt uh, President Biden more than you hurt Donald Trump. What do you say? I mean, my intention is to hurt both of them. RFK also weighed in on the two party duopoly. Let's watch. I think we're living at a time when the two least popular mainstream or um, uh, uh, mainstream party candidates in the history of our country are running. Both of them would actually win the prize for the least popular candidate in the history of a major political party. My father and uncle, my father specifically said on many occasions, including, you know, directly to me, I don't vote for the candidate. I don't vote for the party. I vote for the individual. They understood the dangers that George Washington had warned about, partisan politics, that partisan self-interest would, would subsume and replace and displace patriotism and patriotic impulses. But do you think your dad uh, you ever knew, down, but do you think Neil, your dad you ever knew down, that you would be leaving the Democratic Party? I mean, you're an iconic I, I don't think my father. I don't think my father. I don't think my father would care about that. You know, that kind of party loyalty was irrelevant to him. Well, that's not what some if of your you family members said. Hmm. So it won't surprise you to learn that I quite like his criticisms of the two-party duopoly. But this is where I run up against a wall. It has to do with this conversation around whether or not he's going to be a libertarian. Because it's one thing to have a critique of the duopoly and then choose to structure your own politics in, in contradiction to what is going so wrong. To say, I'm not going to take super PAC money. I'm not going to be corrupted by those parties, um, by big financial interests. I'm going to be more responsive to what polls demonstrate the majority of Americans want me to do, et cetera, et cetera. But the willingness to kind of pitch himself in different ways to potentially join the libertarian ticket when so much of what he has been working toward his entire life as an environmental lawyer, for instance, is so much about growing the regulatory state. What does that mean about what he actually believes in? And is this really a critique of the duopoly or is he more of a political chameleon? Well, look, 
his ideas could be changing over time, evolving. Frankly, the Libertarian Party chairwoman, Angela McArdle, in statements she's made to me and things she said on the show, um, acknowledged and hoped that his evolution was, I mean, from her standpoint, from our Libertarian standpoint, we want him to evolve away from supporting an expansion of the regulatory state because we like a lot of what he's had to say on uh, on mandates and, and, and so on and so forth, and that's what he kind of grew a new audience about. Um, however, it, you know, it doesn't sound, he didn't directly stay there that he's still interested in joining the Libertarian Party. We heard from uh, Matt Welch, who is an editor at the magazine I also write for, Reason, who has done a lot of in-depth reporting on the Libertarian Party, and he thinks, frankly, that um, what it takes to get on the ballot is money, and RFK Jr. already actually has access to that, and so it's not, it's not as quite an obvious, you know, pairing as you might think, and in fact, uh, Angela McArdle aside, leadership aside, there is actually a lot of dissatisfaction with it. There's some, there's some lukewarmness to him in the party, given for exactly the reasons you point out, his long history of, envir of advocacy for environmental regulation. So I, I, I don't think he's going to be the Libertarian Party candidate at this point. I think they'll have a, we will have a candidate of our own, and that's fine. Um, but he, you know, other points he makes in that interview, I, you know, continue obviously to be correct that both the, the major parties have put forth candidates who uh, would each lose a popularity contest where the most unpopular people uh, in yes. national uh, public life. Yeah, all, all of that is true. So let's get back to that money question. Because he has been able to access more money um, through super PACs and otherwise than a lot of the other independent candidates, you know, the Cornell West and Jill Steins of the world, there has been some let's call it optimism about his ability to get onto the ballot. And you heard him say there that he says he's confident about getting on the ballot in all 50 states. However, the reality is that you have to raise, get about a million signatures across the country. There's different rules in different states and depending on how you're running. Um, and that is estimated to require about $15 million. Now I looked and it's difficult to find the amount of money he actually has on hand, but um, some Axios reporting from January indicated that he had raised about $7 million from October to December, but also spent $7.7 .7 million during that time. And it's not clear to me that he actually has the reserves on hand, the $15 million or so that are going to be required for him to be really competitive across the country. And that does seem to be what some of this um, negotiating with the Libertarian Party is about, about b ballot access, which isn't illegitimate, but it's not also about principle or politics either. Yeah, I mean, well, it's about you know, he has his views and the Libertarian Party has their views. And is it close enough to make it work? Um, mm. The Libertarian Party had a candidate, uh, not, the, the candidate in the previous cycle, uh, Joe Jorgensen, I, I think was pretty doctrinaire libertarian. I Disclosure, I voted for her. I pretty much agree with everything she says. I think most people who are libertarians agree with it. It was textbook libertarian. Um, the candidate in the two cycles before that, Gary Johnson, the former mm -hmm. governor of New Mexico, former Republican. Um, I, I think some libertarians felt who I, by the way, also voted for, but I think some people thought he was a little bit not libertarian enough, um, uh, frankly, a little too liberal on a couple issues, maybe not exactly the same way that RFK Jr. is, but maybe not, uh, maybe not, you know, as excited about repealing seatbelt laws or whatever as, as, your, <laughs> as your really serious libertarian activist is. But so that's all to say that in the past, the candidate is not always exactly ideal. And that, that happens for the Democrats well, and well, Republicans, let me, too. Let me ask you if this influences it at Party, all. Um, what do you, well, that's no. not true. The Green Party, I mean, there would, never be a, there would never be a candidate that doesn't, it's, it's, about, it's truly about policy first, which is why we have people like Howie Hawkins that no one's ex excited about. Right. But as long as you, it's about the people are voting for the platform, not the person. But I do want to ask you about this um, uh, VP speculation, Aaron Rodgers. Certainly who has been in the news because of his uh, discourse around the COVID vaccine. He's, He's become in some way COVID a, a, a poster child yeah. in some ways for opposition to those mandates. And Jesse Ventura, a different kind of a political trajectory there. Um, someone who was seen as, uh, I was gonna say Joe Fetterman, a John Fetterman figure, but people aren't thinking about John Fetterman in quite the same yeah. way. In but in a kind of a liberal who has a sort of, um, yes. a, you know, yeah. the, the vibe of someone who's more of a Joe the Plumber type. Yeah. What do you think of those options? Um, very interesting. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers obviously has won to his side, I think, a new um, audience of uh, 
right-wing people or you know former Democrats who are very upset about the mandates. Um, I always say, I noted earlier, that um, in addition to being a, uh, a great uh, athlete, he was my favorite guest host on Jeopardy. So uh, <laughs> I... I, I I, I do quite like him, and I enjoy his delivery. He's a very smart person. So I think that is actually kind of an interesting choice. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, going to say a negative thing about it. We'll see Look, if that Look, notably, develops. in 2020, Ventura considered a presidential run, tweeting that he was testing the waters, and if that he were going to run for president, the Green Party would be yeah. his first choice. He says, I'm an, an independent, I'm not a Democrat or a Republican, because I know they're not the solution. Maybe he should get, <laughs> hop up to the top of the ticket. All right, stick around. We're rising after this.